Today is March 13th, and March 13th is an interesting date in human history because it was on this date, 239 years ago, that humanity made an unprecedented discovery. On this date in 1781, British astronomer William Herschel identified the planet that today we call Uranus. The discovery of the first ice giant in our system, the first discovery of a planet since antiquity, transformed our understanding of the solar system, but it also represented an era of scientific learning when men and women of broad scientific understanding who called themselves polymaths could transform our understanding of the universe from their backyard. The discovery of the blue ice giant Uranus deserves to be remembered. The path by which William Herschel became an astronomer began with an oboe. Herschel was born in the electorate of Hanover in a time when Hanover was both an electorate of the Holy Roman Empire and part of a personal union with Great Britain. That is, the King of Britain, George II, was also the Prince Elector of Hanover. Herschel served in the military in the Hanoverian Guards in their band. After Hanover and its allies were defeated by the French at the Battle of Hastenbeck in 1757, Herschel escaped to England, where he made a living as a composer and playing oboe, violin, and harpsichord. Being a gentleman of his era, he was broadly interested in scientific study. His profession, naturally, drew an interest in the mathematics of music, and he read a book on the subject written by English mathematician Robert Smith called Harmonics, or the Philosophy of Musical Sounds. Apparently, he enjoyed Smith's work because it spurred him to read an earlier book by Smith, A Complete System of Optics, which described methods for telescope construction. And so Herschel picked up yet another instrument, the telescope. The earliest known telescope was built by a Dutch eyeglass maker named Hans Lippershey in 1608. His simple refracting telescope was able to magnify an image up to three times. Refracting telescopes use lenses that focus the light as it travels to the other end of the telescope. An objective lens is used to gather more light than the human eye is able to collect on its own, focus it, and present the viewer with a brighter, clearer, and magnified virtual image. Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei refined the design to create a telescope that could magnify an object up to 30 times. With his telescope, Galileo was able to identify moons around Jupiter. Lippershey's device, which he called a looker, used a convex lens and a concave eyepiece. Later, German astronomer Johann Kepler devised a different version that used both a convex objective lens and a convex eyepiece. Dutch astronomer Christian Huygens built a Keplerian telescope that could magnify an object up to 50 times, using it to better describe the rings of Saturn and to discover that Saturn too had moons. But refracting telescopes raise certain problems, among them that larger magnification required larger lenses, which became expensive and impractical. Invented by English astronomer Isaac Newton in 1688, a reflecting telescope uses one or more mirrored curved lenses that reflect the light to form an image. The curved mirrors serve to magnify the light. While both types of telescopes are still used, reflecting telescopes are much more commonly used for astronomy, since the mirrors can be made in smaller segments, which are then put together to perform as one large mirror, freeing you from the problem of having to make massive lenses. This allowed Herschel, who with study and practice learned to grind his own mirrors, to build his own powerful telescope. Uranus is an ice giant, that is a giant planet composed mainly of elements heavier than hydrogen and helium distinguishing the planet from gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn, which are made up mainly of hydrogen and helium. The term ice giant is derived because during their formation, such planets incorporate the material as either ices or gas trapped in water ice. With a radius of nearly 16,000 miles, Uranus is about four times wider than the Earth, or as NASA explains it, if the Earth were about the size of a nickel, Uranus would be about the size of a softball. Given the difference, it seems odd that it was not until 1781 that an oboist discovered Uranus from the garden of his house at 19 New King Street in Bath, Somerset, England. To be fair, Herschel was not the first to see the planet. In fact, it might have been first viewed by the 2nd century BC Greek astronomer Hipparchus of Nicaea. But compared to the first six planets identified in antiquity, Uranus is very faint. The first six could be easily viewed with the naked eye. The third planet from the sun is particularly easy to see from your backyard. It is possible to see Uranus without a telescope. If you have really good eyesight, you can avoid light pollution and know where to look, but it is very faint. Previous to Herschel, the planet could be seen, but not very clearly. 
using a 6.2 inch aperture, 7 foot focal length Newtonian telescope of his own manufacture, Herschel began searching for and cataloging stars. Herschel particularly liked to look for binary star systems, whose movement allowed the astronomer the ability to calculate the distance from the star to the Earth. Looking for new discoveries, he was particularly focused on stars whose brightness was slightly below that which could be observed with the naked eye. But when viewing the object that would later be called Uranus, he found something surprising. When he changed the magnification on this telescope, the diameter of the object increased in proportion with the power. From his experience, fixed stars did not do that. In fact, the object seemed to move relative to the fixed stars. Herschel realized the significance of that observation. The object he was seeing had to be closer than a star. In fact, it was much closer than a star. While Uranus is nearly 20 times as far away from the Sun as the Earth is, the closest stars, Alpha Centauri A and B, are about 266,000 times as far away from the Sun as the Earth is. It was this ability to clearly observe the object allowed by Herschel's telescope that allowed the first discovery of a new planet since antiquity. This object was the first planet to be identified by its telescope, and it changed our understanding of our solar system. But Herschel, who made his discovery by accident, didn't really know what he had discovered. All he knew was that it was inside the solar system. At first he assumed that it must be a comet. While the world of astronomy was taken by his discovery, they were not convinced by his assumption that it was a comet. As the British astronomer royal Neville Maskelyne noted, the object did not appear to have a tail, as would be expected of a comet, and the object's orbit around the sun was as likely to be nearly circular as it was to have the eccentric elliptical orbit of a comet. After Herschel's discovery, German astronomer Johann Albert Bode realized that the object had been observed before, but was always mistaken as a star. Using these previous observations, Bode was able to determine the object's orbit, which he observed to be nearly circular, more like a planet than a comet. Uranus is the only planet in the solar system whose equator is at nearly a right angle to its orbit. While Uranus revolves on its axis and has a day of just 17 hours, since the spin is at a right angle to the Sun, the Sun does not rise and set based on that rotation. Rather, the direction of the Sun striking the planet is controlled by Uranus's orbit. Being much farther from the Sun than the Earth is, that orbit, or the time it takes for the planet to make a single trip around the Sun, is long, the equivalent of 84 Earth years. Uranus has not even gone around the Sun, the Uranus year, three times since it was discovered in 1781. Because of its orientation, each of Uranus's poles is directly facing the Sun for a quarter of that orbit. That makes for particularly extreme seasons, as summer at a pole means 21 years of direct sunlight, while the other pole will have a 21 year long winter without seeing the Sun. In an age of robust scientific inquiry, it only took about two years for the scientific community to accept Herschel's discovery, and about the same amount of time for the scientific community to convince Herschel that he had discovered a planet and not a comet. And that left an interesting question, what to call the first planet discovered since antiquity. Maskelyne suggested that Herschel name the planet, which is entirely your own and which we are so much obliged to you for the discovery of. Herschel's suggestion was to name the planet after the King of England. George III, by the grace of God, King of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, defender of the faith, had granted Herschel a pension in recognition of his discovery, and Herschel was happy to return the favor. His suggestion was to name the new planet Georgium Sidus, meaning George's star. Herschel felt that the tradition of naming planets after ancient gods that had been developed in antiquity hardly made sense in the new philosophical era. He argued that naming the planet after the king was appropriate because the planet was discovered in the time of George III. While George III was certainly pleased with the idea, the rest of the world was not. Despite Herschel being acknowledged as a planet's discoverer, astronomers who were not from Great Britain found the idea of naming a planet after a particular king to be unacceptable. While several other names were suggested, including Neptune, Johann Bode suggested Uranus. His reasoning had to do with how the previous planets had been named. Jupiter represented the king of the gods in Roman mythology. The Roman god Saturn was the father of Jupiter. It only made sense, but he argued, to name the next planet after Uranus, the father of Saturn. Uranus was particularly fitting, he said, since he was the god of the sky and represented the heavens themselves. That name is, however, unique. 
Jupiter and Saturn are derived from Roman mythology, which, while heavily influenced by Greek mythology, used different names. Uranus is a Greek name, and the planet is the only one in our solar system whose name is directly derived from Greek mythology. The discussion of the name for the new planet dragged on for quite some time, and in doing so affected another bit of scientific discovery. In 1789, German chemist Martin Klaproth identified a previously undescribed new element found in the mineral pitchblende. Klaproth, who was a member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences with Bode, was in, both inspired by Bode's suggestion for the name of the new planet and wanted to support that suggestion, and so named his newly discovered element after the god Uranus. He named the element Uranium. It wasn't, however, until 1850, 69 years after the planet's discovery, before the name Uranus became universal on nautical star charts. A note on pronunciation. Most astronomers prefer to use the pronunciation Uranus, but that might be because so many of us in our adolescence found another pronunciation, Uranus, to be positively hysterical, especially considering that it's talking about essentially a giant ball of gas. But grammatically, both pronunciations are acceptable. But even before Uranus's name was accepted, the planet raised the question another time. After its discovery, several scientists had calculated the planet's orbit. But by the early 19th century, it became clear that something was off in the calculations. In 1841, British astronomer John Couch Adams offered an explanation, proposing that the difference might be because of the gravitational tug of yet another planet. In 1846, French astronomer Urbain Le Verrier mathematically calculated the mystery planet's orbit and location. He sent his findings to German astronomer Johann Galle at the Berlin Observatory, who searched for it using the observatory's achromatic refractor telescope with an aperture of nine Paris inches, one of the highest performing telescopes of the era. Le Verrier's calculations were so precise, within one degree, that Galle found the planet within an hour. Like Uranus, Neptune had previously been viewed, including by Galileo, and even being noted by William Herschel's son, John. However, astronomers who had previously viewed Neptune, which is too dim to be seen without a telescope, had not correctly identified it as a planet. That is, Galileo was the first to see Neptune and know what he was looking at. Galileo originally suggested the name Janus for the newly discovered planet, but Le Verrier claimed the right and chose the name Neptune, the Roman god of the sea and brother of Jupiter. Herschel continued with astronomy and in 1790, with the aid of funds from King George, built a 40-foot reflecting telescope. At the time, it was the largest scientific instrument ever built. He used the 40-foot telescope to discover two new moons of Saturn. Herschel's sister also became an astronomer, most notable for discovering several comets. She is purported to be the first woman to receive a salary as a scientist, and was the first woman in England to hold a government position. Herschel's son, John, was also a polymath, whose contributions to astronomy included identifying seven of Saturn's moons and four of Uranus's moons, the planet his father discovered. He is most well known, however, as the inventor of the blueprint. While no probe has yet been sent from Earth with the specific mission of exploring Uranus, in 1986 NASA's Voyager 2 came within 50,000 miles of the planet's atmosphere. Voyager discovered 10 new moons, two new rings, and a magnetic field stronger than that of Saturn. In the time since the discovery of the planet Uranus, 27 moons have been discovered circling the ice giant, which has a complex system of nine rings. William Herschel's discovery of the planet Uranus well represents an era of scientific inquiry and discovery. The first planet to be identified by a telescope really is a testament to a time when such magnificent devices were available to anybody who had an inquiring mind, and the resources to build one. Science had never before seen something as extraordinary as an oboist redefining our understanding of the solar system from his own backyard.